The response to our Patreon community, and in particular to a comment and a suggestion by one of the members of that community, Henry Silver. He suggests, and I think his suggestion is excellent, that we talk a little bit about the modern large corporation, both in the United States and around the world, and that we make one fundamental point about it, namely that the modern large capitalist corporation is, in 99% of the cases, a top-down, and in Mr. Silver's words, totalitarian institution. And he's right. At the top of a corporation are a tiny group of people, the major shareholders, folks you could gather in one small room, big pension funds, big banks, super wealthy families, and so on. Those people have the majority of the shares. That's what makes them major shareholders. And as such, they decide who's on the board of directors. Because way, the way modern corporations work is you get one vote for who's on the board of directors for every share you own. It's not a democracy. The people don't vote. It's not even a democracy among the people who are shareholders, which is a small minority of the total population. Even they don't have one person, one vote. They have one share, one vote. So if you're sitting at the top of a wealthy family or bank or pension fund, then you have millions of votes, whereas the person who inherited two shares of that company's stock has two votes. Bottom line, the major shareholders select the board of directors. And who are they? Usually 15 to 20 people selected in this manner, usually people that are well-known in corporate leadership circles. They went to school with their major shareholders. They married the children of the major shareholders. They play golf with the major shareholders. You get the picture. They run the corporation. If we take a large corporation, Walmart, Target, General Motors, General Electric, General Dynamics, you name it. The board of directors, selected by that handful of people who are major shareholders, they run the company. Together, those 15 or 30 people are, in the full sense of the word, dictators. What they say goes. And let's take a look about what they have say about. They decide what the company produces, what goods, what services. They decide what technology will be used, what machinery, what chemical processes. They decide, for example, whether the chemical processes will injure the public with pollution or the workers with excessive noise or anything else. They also decide where production takes place, in the United States, providing jobs for Americans or somewhere else providing jobs for somebody else, and giving unemployment to Americans. And finally, they decide what to do with the profits. Notice, all the workers help to produce the profits, but only a tiny number of them decide what is done with the profits. And here comes something that shouldn't surprise you at all. The people at the top of the corporations, the major shareholders, together with the board of directors they select, can and often do give the bulk of the profits produced by everybody to themselves. The money you give to shareholders is called dividends, and the money you give to the board of directors are called fees. Top corporate executives get huge salaries. They often sit on the board of directors just to make it all super cozy. If you want to know why there is such unequal division of income and wealth in major capitalist countries and certainly the United States, it's because of this corporate system. The dictatorship at the top of this totalitarian organization gives itself the lion's share of the profits.
And now to talk about the dictatorship in another way. Everything inside a large corporation is planned. The different parts of the corporation do not interact in a market exchange. They don't bargain. They are told what to do, just like every other employee of the corporation is told by the executives chosen by the board of directors what to do, where to sit when you come in to the corporation, how to dress, what machinery to work with, what raw materials to process, in what way. And then that interesting moment at the end of the day when the employer says to you, go home. You leave behind everything you used your muscles and your brains to produce because that belongs, you guessed it, to the board of directors as fast as it's produced. You're a drone. Your job is to make it happen. Their job is to decide what happens next. That's what dictatorship means. The dictatorship of the modern large corporation is experienced every day by the vast majority of our working citizens who live and work in that environment. When they hear bad words about socialism and top-down dictatorship that has existed in some socialist countries, not in others, but where it has existed, it operates in a dictatorial way. And Americans have an instinctive negative reaction not because they understand how these socialist societies work. Most Americans have never been to one. No, no, what they think badly about socialism is actually what they understand very well from the capitalist corporations they live in and depend on and work with. Here's the irony. In the critique of, of uh, capitalism, where the notion is that the employer, being a small proportion of the population, should not have the dominant wealth and power that the whole society produces, that there should be genuine economic democracy. That idea was hateful to the people at the top. So they held on to their power by demonizing socialism as if it were something fundamentally different even though the only difference there is that the state plays the role that the private enterprise owners and operators play in capitalism. It's a phony issue, the state versus the private. The real issue is, are we going to have a dictatorship of the few people at the top, either way, or are we going to have a genuine democracy? Don't be fooled by the demonization of socialist enterprises. It is a projection from the actual way that capitalist corporations work. This is